So basically, I added this number available property in the movie class and then created a migration. I modified this migration by adding this SQL method here. And this is required to initialize this number available column. And finally, I modified the API by adding this line in the forage block. So pretty simple. We're done with the happy path. Now let's think of the edge cases. What are possible edge cases here? We have four edge cases. Customer ID is invalid. We don't have any movies in our DTO, so the list is empty. One or more movie IDs are invalid. And finally, one or more movies are not available. Now I'm gonna explore these edge cases with two points of view, defensive and optimistic. And there's really no right or wrong here because it's not black or white. Different developers have different points of view and I want you to see both views in this lecture. So let's start with the defensive view. First edge case, customer is not valid. So we should explicitly handle this scenario, which means we should change this single to single or default and then check if customer is null, return bad request. Customer ID is not valid. Next edge case. We don't have any movies in the DTO. So if new rental dot movies dot count is zero, return bad request. No movie IDs have been given. And potentially we could move this up because if we don't have any movies in this DTO, we don't want to query the database to get the customer. Next edge case, one or more movies are invalid. So once we get the movies from the database, we do a check like this. If movies.count, I just realized that I forgot to apply to list here because previously our movies object was an iQueryable object but I'm looking for a list. Now we get the count of these movies. And if they're not equal to count of movies in our DTO, that means one or more of the movies were not loaded. Again, return bad request. One or more movie IDs are invalid. And the fourth edge case. A movie is not available. So in our forage block, if movie.number available is zero, return bad request. Movie is not available. Now we could also add the ID of the movie, but let's not worry about it for now. So this is the defensive approach. I personally would choose this if I'm building a public API that can be used by different applications and different teams. So we do a lot of validation and return errors explicitly. Now we can see with this approach, we have added a number of conditional statements in our method. And in my opinion, this is creating pollution and noise in the code. Next time a developer joins our team and looks at this code, they're like, what's happening here? Too much noise. Now, as I said, if you're building a public API, that's a different story. So that's the extra cost you're paying for making your API return explicit error messages. But in this case, this API is not a public API. It's purely there so that the front end can call it. So I personally don't like to pollute my code with all this kind of conditional statements. So let's go through these edge cases using the optimistic approach. For the customer, I'm gonna go back to the single method. And then we don't need this if block here. For the movies, I'm not going to do this extra check here on the top. And the next one here. But the availability of the movie is an interesting edge case. Even if we assume that the client is sending us movies that are available, it's possible that a hacker calls this API a hundred times for a valid movie. And this movie will eventually become unavailable. And this property number available will end up being negative. And this should never, ever, ever happen because it can totally mess up with future calculations. So I wanna explicitly check for this 
mainly to prevent a malicious user from messing up with our application. For the other edge cases, the current implementation does protect our application, so we don't need any extra code. So I showed you two different ways of handling edge cases, and it's really up to you which approach you prefer. Just remember with the defensive approach, you pollute your code with a lot of validation checks, which are not always required. So these extra lines of code can make your maintenance and future development more costly. And that's why I personally prefer to use defensive programming when I really have to. All right, our API is ready. Next, we're gonna start working on the front end.